how true this is. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Well, it doesn't say that all things are good, but it says that God works it for the good in all things. Now, how many of you have ever had a disappointment in your life? Raise your hand. Right now, think about this. God says this. If you love me, I can turn that disappointment around for the good. I can take whatever you have to offer me, the broken pieces of your life, the broken pieces of your marriage, the broken pieces of, of whatever. I can take that and I can make something good of it. But it says this for those who love God. And notice the rest of it. It says, who have been called according to his purpose. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, you have been called according to his purpose. You have to live, and I have to live a life that's loving to God, that we are doing what he wants us to do. We're obedient to him in, in those areas. And he says, when we do that, God does miraculous things in our life. Now, look at Mary. She was a, an unwed teenager. Her fiance almost broke off the marriage. I would imagine that she was pretty disappointed at that point in her life. Wouldn't you agree? Had to be pretty disappointed, discouraged, devastated. What am I going to say? What am I going to do with all this information? I want you to notice God's master plan in this whole story. Notice this. It says, now at this, all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Let's read this, this last part out loud. Are you guys ready with me? Mm -hmm. Let's read it. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. What was God's master plan? Let me give you a few things to think about. Number one, God's master plan was to tell us how much he loves us, right? Somebody asked me uh, recently, how do I know God loves me? And I said, look at the cross, right? The cross proves how much he loves you. That he was willing to hang there and die there. Why? For our sins. So that we could be forgiven and we could have an opportunity to go to heaven. If you've ever doubted God's love, look at the cross. Amen. It proves it. That's how much he loves us. Now notice this. He, he came to let us know what God is like. Now, a lot of people say, I think God's like this, or I think God's like that. And the, the amazing thing about me is that most of the time we're all just guessing, right? But without Jesus Christ coming 2,000 years ago, there's a lot of things that we wouldn't know about God. We would know that he's a pretty powerful being, right? He created the heavens and the earth. We would know that he likes order, right? He put things in order. We do, think, do know that he likes variety, right? There's hundreds of different kinds of beetles, right, in the world today, right? John, Ringo, Paul, you know, you know what I mean, right? God likes variety, but would you know that God is concerned about the details of your life without Jesus? No, you wouldn't know that. Would you know that if you're sick, that he would reach out and touch you like the leper? Or the blind man who was sitting on the side of the road begging that he would go and heal that person? Or the people who were uh, paralyzed or just inflicted with life and not happy? People like Lazarus. Um, not Lazarus, Nicodemus, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got the wrong man. No. Who was the wee little man? Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. Right, right. He was the little guy that he went to his house and, and he had supper with him. You know, one of the slams that the religious people used to put on Jesus is this. They would say, he's a friend of sinners. How could he be a religious person if he hangs around with those people? You guys know what I'm talking about? Those people? Yeah. Well, Jesus... Didn't take it as a slam. He wore it as a badge of, of honor. Yeah, I am. I am a friend of sinners. And, and Jesus Christ, we wouldn't know that about God without him. He came to heal our hurts and our disappointments. He came to transform our lives. He came for a reason that this little girl could not have even imagined. That he was going to change the world through her life. Now, notice this passage in Proverbs. How many of you got plans to go shopping later again? Okay, how many of you plan on doing something fun in the next couple days? I want you to notice this about our plans. Proverbs 19.21 says, You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. 
Now we can make all kinds of plans and we can make all kinds of uh, goals for our life. And those are good things to have. But the reality is if it's outside of what God wants you to do, he's not going to allow it to happen. And sometimes we look at our plans and we say, well, why didn't this work? Or God, why didn't that marriage situation work? Or God, why didn't this happen? And, and, and God, God is wanting to work in those relationships. The scripture says God's purposes will prevail. Now, is it God's purpose for people to have divorce? No. Is it God's purpose for people to get sick and die? I, I, I would say no. However, it happens because we live in a fallen world, right? When God wants to do something in your life, he will let it happen. And you can hold on to that promise that we can make many plans, but it's the Lord's purpose that we that will prevail. Now, let me just ask you a question. Now, look up here for a second. Has God ever asked you to do something that you didn't understand why he asked you to do it? What do you think? Yeah? yeah. Has he? Well... That's a part of faith, guys. Trusting God no matter what. God, I don't know, understand why this is happening in my life. But God, if you're real, I pray that you would just show me what is your master plan in this. Okay. Instead of focusing on the problem, we look to God for his plan. Now, notice this. Notice number three on your outline. What else should we do when disappointment hits? Well, number three says, no matter what happens, we worship God. No matter what happens, we worship God. Someone once said that your faith is as only as strong as the things that hinder you. Your faith is, is as only as strong as the things that that hinder you, the things that you come up against each and every day that cause you to lose a, a little faith in God or those things that are, are troubling in your world right now that cause you to doubt God. Those are the things that are keeping you from enjoying what God wants to do in your life. Now, is everything going to be perfect and hunky dory in your life? No. I don't know why I said hunky dory. I never said that in my life. <laughs> Edit that out, man. All right. <laughs> what hinders you from following God today? Let me just show you this passage in John 4.23. I love this in the message paraphrase. It says, your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before him in their worship. Now, let me just ask you this morning, are you willing to be honest with God this morning? Those who, who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God, help me to know the truth about you, God. God, help me to worship you with all that's within me, Lord. Help me to worship you like these people worship you. Now, look at this. We, we've heard the story of Mary. We heard the story of Joseph. We heard the story of these wise men. Now, look at what they did when they were disappointed. Look at Mary in Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 19. It says, when, But Mary treasured these things, all these things, pondering them in her heart. Well, what things? The story about Jesus, that he was born, that people wanted to worship him, that he was going to be the king of the, the universe, and that, that eventually that, that kind of king would suffer. And she took it all in, and she thought about that, and she just marveled about what God wanted to do in her life. She was pondering them. What did she do? She waited on God. Now, let me ask you, if you've ever been disappointed and you wanted a fast solution, it's, a, it's very hard to wait, isn't it? God, help right now. God, help yesterday. I want you to notice Mary didn't get an immediate answer. She had to think about what God was doing in her life. She, she considered what the angel said. She, she was considering God's master plan. And she said, no matter what, God, I'm going to follow you. No matter what happens. No matter what people say. Now notice this about Joseph. Right? This man who finds out his fiance is now pregnant and he's not the father. Look at what he does. He says, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded. Now, Joseph worshiped God by being obedient. He found